I want to carry on our contemplation from this morning. But I have to confess that the more the more deeply we explore what is really true, what is really real, the less it is possible to say anything about it. So I, I find myself faced with this dilemma. Do I just remain silent? At best, say I am, recognizing that nothing else that is said is absolutely true. Or do I give in to this irrepressible impulse to say something, to give a form to that which has no form, to say something about that which is really unsayable. I go back and forth between these two possibilities. feel like the old Zen master who said, if I speak, I tell a lie. But if I remain silent, I am a coward. I don't exactly feel like a coward remaining silent. But I do feel that I'm not obeying some deep impersonal impulse. The impulse an artist feels to give form to the formless. To try, to try to touch reality with our words. To try to make a form. To say something. In which reality shines as it is. the ultimate word the, the primordial word is I it is the first form of God the Logos
eye is the, the ultimate symbol of God's presence. The mind should tremble at the sound of it, even the thought of it. My mother was young, she was taking painting classes with a man called Shatin Sarachi and talking enthusiastically. She was a teenager about God and he said to her, if, if God exists, how do you dare even mention his name? As we saw earlier this morning, the knowledge I am expresses awareness's primary knowledge of itself. The knowledge I am is the first thing that awareness knows of itself, of its own being. In fact, 
is all that awareness knows of itself. The knowledge I am is the last thing that the mind knows. It is awareness's first knowledge. It is the mind's last knowledge. Let me explain what I mean by that. That the mind normally knows I am a person, I am a man, I am a woman. I am 22 or 47 or 66 years old. I am healthy, I am sick, I am cold, I am hungry, I am tired, I am lonely and so on. So for the mind, the I am is always qualified by a feeling, a state, an age, an activity, a relationship, and so on. But if the mind embarks on an investigation into what it essentially is, <coughs> divesting itself of all these accumulated qualities, if it traces its way back through the layers of its experience, discarding everything that is not essential to it, it arrives at the knowledge I am. I am is such the mind's last knowledge. In fact, as the mind touches the experience I am, having lost all the qualities or the having lost all the qualities that it derived from the content of experience, it ceases to be mind, it ceases to be something finite. It is revealed as pure awareness. So the knowledge I am is the intersection between awareness and the finite mind. It is like the prison door. It is like the door that separates a prison from the outside world. Imagine a, a doorway at the entrance to a prison that separates the outside world from the inside of the prison. You can pass through the same doorway in two directions. You can go from the outside world into the prison and in doing so you lose your freedom. And you can pass through the same doorway from the prison to the outside world, in which case you regain your freedom. When the mind passes through the doorway, the portal, the knowledge I am, it is divested of all the qualities that it derived from the content of experience and stands revealed as infinite awareness. It is liberated liberated from the limitations that it borrowed from the content of experience. 
it regains its freedom. It passes, the mind passes out of time into eternity as it passes through this portal, the knowledge I am. Now as awareness passes through the same portal in the opposite direction, it acquires the limitations, the qualities of experience. and seems, as a result, to become a finite mind, a qualified awareness. As such, it loses its freedom. As awareness passes through the portal I am, it leaves or seems to leave its home in eternity and enters time. Infinite awareness becomes or seems to become a finite mind located in a body, in time and space. But in doing so, awareness infinite being, infinite aware being, God's being, leaves a trace of itself in the finite mind as the pure knowledge I am. Thus the knowledge I am that each of us as a person seems to have within ourself is in fact uh, the the trace of God's being in us, the hint of the beloved in us. The church bells are a synchronistic event in the outside world that, cor that correspond with the inner experience I am.
and as such signal God's presence in the world as the world.
I want to come back to awareness's experience of itself. Awareness's experience of its own being. Or being's experience of itself. I should really say being's awareness of itself or being's knowledge of itself because as we said I, I think on the second day I use the word experience to refer to objective experience and of course when I refer to awareness is knowledge of itself or beings knowledge of itself I don't mean theoretical knowledge I mean experiential knowledge so let's return to our beings knowledge of itself Our being's knowledge of itself, as we have seen, does not take place in subject-object relationship. The sun illuminates the earth in subject-object relationship. The sun is the subject of the illumination and the earth is its object, the object that is illuminated. But the sun also illuminates itself. But in the sun's illumination of itself, there is no subject or object. All other objects, all other planets, the sun illuminates in subject-object relationship. But there is no subject or object of its own illumination of itself. It illuminates itself just by being itself. It's exactly the same. Awareness is knowledge of its own being. Awareness is knowledge of itself. It doesn't take place in subject-object relationship. It's awareness of everything else, thoughts, sensations, perceptions, it takes place in subject-object relationship. Awareness has to become or seem to become a separate subject of experience, a finite mind, in order to know an object of experience, such as a thought or a perception. But in order to know itself, it does not need to divide itself in two into a subject and an object. It knows itself just by being itself. Its being itself is its knowing itself. Indeed, in the form of the subject-object relationship, awareness cannot know itself. Because a subject must always stand apart from the object that it knows and must therefore be a finite subject. And whatever that finite subject is that knows the object imposes its own finiteness, its own limitations on whatever it knows. So awareness cannot know itself in subject-object relationship. It knows the world in subject-object relationship, or seems to. But awareness cannot stand apart from itself. It cannot separate itself from itself and look back at itself and say, ah, there I am, awareness. Even the name awareness the word awareness is a noun, it is an object. And as such, it only makes sense from the point of view of the subject that speaks it or knows it. In its own experience of itself, awareness is not awareness. 
which is just I am. Awareness is awareness or being are the names we give to the I am when viewed from the second person perspective of a finite mind. They are the best the mind can do. Even the word God is a noun, an, an object, and only means anything in relationship to the subject which knows it. But God cannot stand apart from itself and know itself as God. In other words, God does not know that it is God. Awareness does not know that it is awareness because it cannot stand apart from itself. Being cannot stand apart from itself. Where would it go and know itself as being? In order to know anything, awareness must stand apart from that thing and know it in subject-object relationship. But awareness cannot stand apart from anything. The only way awareness can stand apart from anything the only way awareness or being can stand apart from anything is to seem to become a finite subject, a separate self, and to know that thing from the second person perspective of that finite subject. But awareness or aware being cannot stand apart from itself. Where would it go? So from the point of view of awareness or being, I'm going back and forth between the two words, but I always mean them synonymously. Awareness and being. So awareness cannot stand apart from itself. It cannot become a finite Awareness, and therefore, from its point of view, all it ever knows is its own being. In other words, awareness knows, awareness as it essentially is, knows nothing. It has no experience. In religious language, God knows nothing. God does even not even know that it is God. God's knowledge of itself is only the knowledge I am. It has no other knowledge or experience. Because in order to know or experience anything else, it would have to stand apart from itself. How could it do that? Where would it go? God knows nothing. And that is why when we know nothing, we come closest to God. When we are nothing, we come closest to God.
will do. God knows nothing. Infinite being knows nothing other than its own being. It is what the mind refers to as everything. What is nothing from God's point of view is everything from the mind's point of view. Strictly speaking, we shouldn't even say that God is nothing that is not a thing because in its experience of itself, in infinite beings, awareness of itself, there are no things with which to contrast itself. There is no thing for it to be not. But with reference to the things that the mind seems to know, we can say that God or infinite being is not a thing or nothing. From its own point of view, it is neither something nor nothing. It just is. I just am. But the mind can know nothing of this that is beyond, prior to, something or nothing. The mind perceives the reality of infinite being, God's being, through the, the lens of its own limitations. It refracts God's infinite being into a multiplicity and diversity of names and forms. It filters reality through thinking and perceiving and experiences reality as the world. In other words, the world, the universe, is how God's infinite being appears when it is viewed through the lens of thinking and perceiving. filtered through thinking, God's eternity appears as time. Filtered through perceiving, sorry, filtered through thinking, God's eternity appears as time. Filtered through perceiving, God's infinite being appears as a space. Time and space are not inherent in reality. They are just how reality appears when viewed through the lens of a human mind. Reality, God's infinite being, is not extended in any dimension. It has no dimensions. Don't try to think of that, or at least, if you try to think of it, the mind will be destroyed. It cannot go there. It cannot pass through that portal and remain a mind. When the mind passes through the portal I am, it ceases to be a mind. It's like the moth touching the flame. Becomes the flame but cannot know it. It is it, but cannot know it. 